In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit test equipment, the IM1210 Digital Multimeter. I'll discuss the history and features of the instrument, and we'll look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the multimeter in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. A multimeter is an electronic instrument that can measure a number of different electrical values, typically voltage, current, and resistance. One of the simplest types is the volt ohm milliammeter, or VOM, which is just an analog meter with appropriate switching for different measurement modes and ranges. The vacuum tube voltmeter, or VTVM, used tube circuitry to improve the sensitivity and accuracy of measurements. By the late 1960s, integrated circuits made it feasible to implement a digital multimeter, where the measured value is shown as numeric digits rather than being read off of an analog meter. In 1971, Heathkit introduced their first digital multimeter kit, the IM1202. It was sold until 1978. A three and a half digit meter, it was quite expensive, 250 US dollars in 1976. Heathkit also offered lower cost two and a half digit meters, starting with the IM1202 in 1973. At any given time, Heathkit typically offered several models of DMMs with different pricing and performance. The main characteristic that distinguished them was the number of display digits, as well as features. The IM1212 was an updated version of the IM1202 in a different case style, but still featuring a Nixie tube display. In 1976, it was replaced by the IM1210, the subject of this video. Fundamentally, it's the same as the IM1212 and the earlier IM1202, with the main change being a switch from neon Nixie tubes to seven segment LEDs. This, in addition to changing the case from metal to plastic, reduced the parts count and the overall cost. It was offered from 1976 to 1982 and typically retailed at a cost of US $67.95. The IM1210 was sold as a kit. Heathkit also sold a factory assembled and calibrated version at higher cost, the SM1210. The IM1210 was replaced by the IM2260 in 1982. The IM1210 is a digital multimeter that can measure DC and AC voltage and current and resistance. It's solid state and uses red seven segment LEDs for display. The display is two and a half digits, meaning that it can display counts from zero to 199. A vertical over segment indicates if the measured value is out of range and a minus sign lights up if the input voltage or current is the wrong polarity. Four ranges are provided for voltage and current measurements. For AC and DC voltage measurements, the ranges are 0 to 2, 20, 200, and 2000 volts, although the maximum input is 1000 volts DC and 700 volts RMS AC. For AC and DC current, the ranges are 0 to 2, 20, 200, and 2000 milliamps. For resistance measurements, there are five ranges, 0 to 200, 2,000, 20,000, 200,000, and 2 million ohms. Accuracy is plus or minus 1% for DC voltage measurements, plus or minus 1.5% for DC current and AC voltage measurements, plus or minus 2% for AC current measurements, and plus or minus 1.5% for resistance. AC measurements can be made over a frequency range of 50 hertz to 10 kilohertz. Input impedance on all voltage ranges is 1 megaohm. The maximum input voltage is 700 volts AC RMS or 1000 volts DC, except on the 2 volt range, which is 250 volts AC or 350 volts DC. The maximum input current is 3 amps, protected by a fuse. The unit can be wired for 120 or 240 volts AC power. The AC input is fused with another fuse in the common input lead. The unit is floating with respect to ground. The meter can be calibrated without any additional test equipment. The assembly manual is of the usual high quality that Heathkit was renowned for and has extensive troubleshooting hints including theory of operation and oscilloscope waveforms. The unit's housed in a blue plastic case. Heathkit referred to the material as psycholac. It was used by a lot of their instruments at the time, but I don't know of any other Heathkits that shared the same case as this unit. On the back is the power cable connection and safety and series number stickers. 
Posts on the case allow the power cord to be wound around them when not in use. The front panel controls are very simple and straightforward to operate. A mode switch selects between off, DC voltage, AC voltage, DC current, AC current, and resistance. The range switch selects between five ranges, 2, 20, 200, and 2000, with an additional 200 ohms range that's only used in resistance mode. It has a two and a half digit red LED display, meaning that the first digit can only be zero or one. LED indicators show overrange or negative polarity. On the front are two banana jacks for the inputs, a red plus and a black negative. Modern multimeters now use a recessed type of banana jack that's safer, but these were standard at the time. Above the input jacks is a small hole marked zero. Behind it's a trimmer pot that can be adjusted during calibration so that the meter reads zero with no input voltage. This may need to be adjusted periodically if the instrument's calibration drifts. The kit came with a set of test leads similar to these ones. The inputs to the unit are floating, that is, the common input is not connected to AC ground, so it can make measurements that are not referenced to ground, up to a maximum of 1000 volts DC or 700 volts AC from ground. On the bottom are four plastic feet, ventilation holes, and access to the screws for opening the case. Looking inside, you can see that most circuitry is on a large printed circuit board with a smaller PCB mounted vertically that contains the three seven-segment LEDs. It's a phenolic silk screen single-sided board, and as is typical, a number of wire jumpers are required to make additional connections. There's a significant amount of additional point-to-point -point wiring around the rotary function and range switches. It uses both transistors and integrated circuits, mostly 7400 series TTL chips, as well as one op amp. Power supply circuitry is at the back, including the power transformer and filter capacitors. The AC input is fused, and there is a second fuse in the positive test lead. Several trim pots are adjusted during calibration, which makes use of some 1% precision resistors. I'll talk about the calibration procedure shortly. The meter uses a simple but ingenious design. It uses one op amp, an LM301, which implements an AC converter. There are a few 7400 series chips, two 7490 decade counters, a dual JK flip-flop for the leading one digit and overrange indicator, and a couple of quad gate packages for some timing tasks. Most of the analog to digital converter, or ADC, is implemented with discrete transistors. The input being measured, either resistance, DC or AC voltage or current, is converted to a DC voltage within a fixed range. A ramp voltage is used to charge a capacitor. When the capacitor starts charging, a timer is started. When the capacitor reaches the input voltage, the timer is stopped and the timer has a value that corresponds to the value being measured, which is then displayed on the display. Unlike more complicated units, this scheme did not require much circuitry. Later Heathkit designs were able to use VLSI chips designed specifically for implementing a digital multimeter to do most of the work. Calibrating a DMM is a chicken and egg situation. You need an accurate meter to calibrate it, but if you bought this DMM kit, you probably don't already have one. Heathkit solved this by using a Zener diode reference for calibrating it. The Zener voltage varies slightly with each diode, so they measured the Zener voltage and two resistors at the factory and recorded the unique voltage value on an envelope in the kit. The calibration voltage should be marked by the user on the paper glued to the transformer. Calibration can then be done using the known calibration reference voltage as well as a set of built-in precision resistors. I bought this unit from a local Ottawa, Canada eBay seller in February of 2021. It came with no manual or leads but was in pretty good cosmetic condition and seemed to be working. The build quality is quite good. I found a complete copy of the manual online. I also had a set of test leads that would work. The unit was complete and showed readings when powered on. I gave it a basic cleaning. There's some kind of glue residue on the bottom, maybe from a sticker that I wasn't able to easily remove. The date codes for the ICs are all around the middle of 1978, which would indicate their original parts and the kit dates from 1978 or so. I initially thought it was fully working, but found that the AC ranges did not show any readings. DC and ohms functions were good. Running through the troubleshooting procedure in the manual pointed to a bad LM301 op amp. I swapped it with a good chip from another Heathkit instrument and it worked. There was some black carbon inside the case and burn marks around input resistor R78 which appears to have been replaced. I suspect the unit experienced an overload which damaged the resistor which was subsequently replaced. This may have been when the op amp was damaged. If so, the previous owner didn't fully repair it.
Running through the test and calibration procedure then went smoothly. The precision resistors were still very close to correct values as measured by an accurate DMM, and the DC calibration voltage was also very close to what's marked on the unit. I tested the unit on all ranges and functions against a modern DMM, and it was within specs. Operation is quite straightforward. You set the function and the range and directly read the measurement on the display. Here, for example, I'm measuring the output of a 9-volt battery. We set the range to 20 volts and apply the test leads. Here the reading is 7.2 volts. If the polarity is negative, we'll see a minus indicator with no reading, and we must reverse the leads. If the reading is higher than the input range, as here when I set the range to 2, we see a measured value in the overrange indicator. Note that you can make measurements that are slightly overrange, in which case the first digit can be interpreted as a 2. You can make measurements up to 0.5 overrange, equivalent to a reading of 2.5. So, for example, connected to this power supply, as the voltage exceeds 1.99 volts on the 2-volt range, we can still get meaningful readings up to 2.5 volts. AC voltage measurement is similar. If the input voltage is not known, you should start with the highest range and work down to a suitable range. Current measurements are also similar, so I won't bother showing this. Current measurements are made by breaking a circuit and putting the meter in series. It's recommended not to change ranges when measuring large currents or voltages, as the range switch could be damaged. For resistance measurements, you put the resistor under test across the test leads. Here I've connected it to a resistance substitution box. The ohms function has an extra range for 0 to 200 ohms. The higher ranges read in kilo ohms, except for the top one, which is mega ohms. For resistance measurements, the over lamp indicates an over range or an open circuit. The manual warns that the current used on the 200 ohm range, 10 milliamps at 9 volts, can potentially damage semiconductors such as transistors, so the 2K or higher range should be used for this. The IM1210 was an incremental improvement over the earlier IM1212, updating the display from neon Nixie tubes to LEDs. While it can't compare to modern DMMs, within its limitations it works quite well and at the time it was a good value for the money. Few hobbyists could otherwise have afforded a digital multimeter in the late 1970s. But by 1982 it was no longer state of the art and was replaced by the IM2260 which took advantage of VLSI technology that was available to offer more features and accuracy at less cost. And today, for well under $50, you can get a multimeter that's much smaller, safer, more accurate, and has many more features.